Hello, everyone. Ben joined by Steve Georgie on Tuesday, October 22nd to give you your midday mayhem. And Steve, we are seeing a lot of mayhem. I mean, these markets were really high. They set back and then now we have two days of buying in here. So what's going on? What are we seeing? I'm going to go with the idea that we got a lot of mayhem, right? So it's one of those things where we're getting still some short covering yep. that is maybe pushing these markets a little bit higher. Um, are you saying short covering from the funds? Are they coming in here? Because they, they were selling it last week, right? I mean, you can see that. They did. But are they really going to be, you think they're going to take a stance, heavy short, heavy long, no. between now and the election, or maybe now and the end of the year? No, I, I don't think that at all. I think they're actually going to sit tight, right? And let's kind of keep our hands dry, right? This is going to be like, I'm, I'm, I'm good. But I think today you're kind of getting this inflow. It's just a, a buying type of mentality across all the markets today. And you're seeing it coming into the grains, but now we're at some resistance, right? 50% retracement point for corn. We're sitting here in this $10 area for beans. What do we do? Bean oil is what's really finding strength and keeping the bean complex stronger. So, right. You know. Yeah, and, and we're seeing stuff too in, in some weird option place where some of the pricing, you know, those further out of the money options are more expensive. So as we kind of simmer down in this, you know, we get into these slow markets where you're not really having big moves higher or lower, it's like, well, we're, it's got to gotta make a move at some point, yeah. right? And is that going to be up? Is that going to be down? We don't know. But as we start getting more headlines, who's going to be president? What's going on in the Middle East? I mean, you saw that with, you said crude oil today. Yeah. You know, a dollar higher, you hear more about missile talk and bombs hitting hospitals and whatever else, as bad as that is, that's headline news that's going to move the market. It is. And we're kind of running out of that, though. Yeah. You know, or at least I don't want to say we're running out of it, but we're getting to a point where the market gets tired. Right. If we think back several years ago, and we talk about when Russia invaded Ukraine and, and we saw every market explode. Right. What happened? Those stories got tired and the markets came back. And actually, we went lower than where we even started from. But, you know, it's one of those. These stories are only good for that moment unless you get some fundamental reason to back why the story is doing what it's doing. So I'm not sure we have that just yet. Something, too, that we don't really talk about is this gold market, metals in general, right? Ooh. So gold's hitting all-time highs, silver's hitting all-time highs, you know, not maybe not all-time highs, but recent highs, Yeah. gold, I mean, 2,500 plus right now. And, you know, a lot of talk of new batteries, energy, you know, EV cars and the bricks coming in here. Yeah. Are we beating that horse too much? What's going to take it for gold to go to the next level if, if, this, if this trend's going to continue? I feel like gold's already at that level, right? The difference is that you look back, you had gold. Gold is making all-time highs currently, right? So it seems like every day you walk in and it's just stronger, stronger, and it is kind of fueling itself right, right now until something else happens. Is it because some fundamental reasons? Is it because of the BRICS countries? Is it just because it's it's bullish on a chart, right? We don't know. Silver is kind of the one I feel like we need to be watching. And a lot of that is because, yes, it is more of a an industrial metal. But it is also a precious metal-ish, right? And it's kind of tied in. We're sitting $34 right now an ounce for silver. When you look back at the all-time high for silver, we were sitting near $50 back in 2011. Yeah. So we're talking 13 years ago. Um, but can we get back there? You got gold making all-time highs? Can silver? It almost like it needs to play catch up a little bit, right? right? So, uh, But it is still tied in with more of that industrial metal type idea. So you got to be careful. It's still going to be tied in with the economy a little bit. So something yeah. to keep in mind. Yeah. Speaking of the economy, I mean, you're looking at livestock right now. Let's look at cattle, right? I mean, yeah. that that market's been doing really good. It's got yeah. some resistance. You have some really good, out of the gates this morning, a really strong open. Yeah. And now we're kind of setting back here. It's kind of finding its pattern. It doesn't, it doesn't seem yeah. like it wants to be. It's getting, it, to me, it seems like it's getting a little tired. I feel like it's, it's once again, we'll go back to the stories, right? The stories are, that are playing. Uh, or that are surrounding cattle are, are getting tired, right? So we're, we're hearing the same stuff, and the market's kind of reacting a little and pushing whatever. So we're getting to this point where we're getting tired. You know, um, I feel like as we get closer to, as you mentioned earlier, the election, uh, what is the economic situation going into that, through it? What does it look like? It may have more of a tie to the livestock market as well. So something certainly to be kind of mindful for, but. You know, it uh, it's certainly nonetheless still working its way higher today, right. over a dollar yet. So I mean, it was rallying when you had those box beef numbers yeah. coming in, hitting four month lows. It just you know, box beef was dead, 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 yeah. dead, dead. Now you're starting to see box beef come back to life a little bit. Yep. And this cattle market is just 
notorious for being vicious, right? I mean, it can give you everything you want and take it all away just as quickly as you can. Big, big swings yeah. and expect to see that again. You got a lot of people loading up on the long side of the cattle market. We need to be very careful. Are we getting off the up here? Are we seeing more buyers? And we got to be careful with right. you know, how many more people can you get into this market before, right? Hey, no one else is up here. Oh my God, I don't want to be caught holding this. Right. Bag. Right. So we got to be careful. Of that. You do have to be careful of that. That could happen quick. Yeah. So, anything else you want to talk about? Anything else you're looking at this market that you think is maybe important for our customers out there? You know, big thing is, is I, I just don't get caught up in the long side of the grain market. Yep. Right. We got over 15 billion bushel of corn coming in. We got a record crop for soybeans coming in right now. You know, we still have to find a home for that. When we talk about things, making some decisions as a producer out there, be careful, right? As you're trying to find storage, you're trying to find ways to put it. You know, when you look at basis levels, right? Basis right now is pretty wide. It can narrow back in. Typically, your best basis is right around December 10th. Bin door shut, you right. find a home, and then all of a sudden commercials need to pry some grain out, right? You tend to see that happen as you get through Thanksgiving and that December 10th time frame for setting basis. So just be careful on that. We'd be glad to walk you through that and help you out with with any any questions that you may have. Yeah, if you guys got anything, give us a call. We can really only say so much on here. If you want a personalized plan or just have specific questions for your operation, give us a call. We're available anytime. 100-2-MARKET, that's 1-800-262-7538, or check us out at allendalehub.com. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Steve. Yeah, thank you, guys. <laughs>